Uh, that's a difficult language. I, I, I could you know, survive with few words, but it was mostly like smiling and using your fingers and talking. <laughs> Some of them speak Danish though, I mean, but the older ones didn't. And it was, uh, it was pretty easy actually, when you gained the trust, they, they, you, you like one of them. And it's, a lot of it, 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 the icebreaker between us like that is, you know, just having fun or fooling around a little bit, like have joking or teasing. And that's something that has broken the ice quite often between us, so, yeah, it's... Uh... I have been to Greenland quite a few times and I find people very uh, timid, you know, they, they are very attentive, yeah. they watch, but they would not uh, make the first move themselves. Yeah, that's Do you right. agree on that, on the mentality type? They are yeah, that's a, so, sometimes they're kind of laid back or shy, you know, and sometimes when you see like the people that I, I have great friends there, and when you see them on the street, they're very shy and, and, and you know, laid back in a way, uh, and they don't look very big when you see them, but when you go out with them on the ice or whatever in conditions that you really need them, then you see how big they are, and how, how strong and, and great they are. And in some cases I would not have survived without them, you know, they, they have such a great skill of, of dealing with the Arctic and uh, this sixth sense they have is uh, something, you know, it's remarkable to see it. And I, I kind of watch people and, and I look in their eyes and I, I kind of sense people and how, they, how good they are or clever they are and you see it in their eyes. In Good Hunter you see how great he is. And you, and, and you also see if there is a bad one. I can sense that too. Instantly. But a good and a bad hunter in their own understanding, they depend on each other, meaning they have to work together and live together because the settlements at times are so small, so everyone has to help each other, or is oh, they that do. not the they case? They do, like when they catch a whale, they cut, they split the, the meat, you know, so and that's, uh, yeah, it's a community that works together, and uh, and they support each other or help each other if someone is going hunting, they, they go together, or they also see that when they are now, when with the, there's a lot of increase in tourism, and uh, when they are either going by boat or dogs, that they, 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 they go together sometimes, you know, like I said. Two, 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 three hunters, or a group of four, or maybe two. Do you see an increase in tourism over the last 30 years, or...? Oh, yes, yes, a lot. I mean, when I was there, in the beginning, I was... Sometimes there was nobody, and nobody been in some of those villages, I felt that. And uh, when I came, everybody, you know, knew in a, in a few minutes that I was from Iceland, and uh, it's like spreading around the village. I don't think that would happen now, because there are... So many people coming, and it's not very just a. And what's your opinion about the tourism? Uh, I, I, my opinion about it is that I think Greenland will be a very big tourism country, a country where tourism will, you know, just, you know, skyrocket because it's so much to see, and uh, they have to just fix their infrastructure, like airports, so people can go there, and I, I think that could support or and help them in getting. Uh, a better life they have uh, to, uh, you know, because if uh, the problem with the hunters is they cannot sell the product they're hunting, like seal skins or anything, it's banned, so mm -hmm. they're not having this income as they used to have. So that's also part of the reason that uh, they've been, you know, going down. And so they will have a job as, you know, guiding people on dog sleds or sailing. So that's going to be a good job for them. And I think the tourism will increase that because it's very expensive to travel and fly, you know, in Greenland. Because, uh, yeah, there's, uh, if, if they, the, the airports are, are usually like one meter too small. So the only aircraft that can go in is like DAS 7, DAS 8. Yes. You know, so. It's not every aircraft that can land on those airstrips. There's like two airports that you can land in a jet. Uh, but uh, that would change if they would change, make better air, air, airports in some of the places. So, and, and it would make it cheaper. And you have other airlines also flying in. 
Uh, so it's the competition, and uh, now uh, when I'm I'm traveling, it's, uh, I want to do a book about the Arctic, and what has been uh, another one. I did one, and I want to do a bigger one now. With uh, uh, so, and and the problem with it is that it takes me a long time because it's so expensive to go, yeah. and I wish I could go and finish it quite fast. If it wasn't like that, because it's cheaper to fly to the moon, and and then. <laughs> Yeah, Nuuk by now is a very modern yeah, yeah, it place. Is, yeah. It's amazing. What kind it's of growing, building? It's growing. It's growing, and it's very yeah. It's a nice city, actually. But the total number of people in Greenland is more or less stable, meaning they yeah. move from smaller places mm -hmm. to the bigger ones in the settlements. Yeah. Some of them. I don't know what happen, will happen. Like for instance, with the, some of the smaller settlements, if if it's like if you take the east coast and Skorpion, there's like. Uh, I'm not sure whether this uh, will it will kind of. I hope it will live and people can live there. But I'm not not sure whether it's uh, economically okay to be there. But I think in, if the tourism will will rise, then that could be great because then they have people coming and seeing most of the spectacular landscape you know, you can see Absolutely. and huge icebergs. It's is sound is the, is the fjord is the longest in the world so and I sailed it last summer it's really really beautiful and uh, so it's like going to a different planet so I think that would yeah. you know they have to do something something maybe you don't have to answer because it's a tough question okay so many young people yeah. male age 16 to 25 mm -hmm don't want to live anymore, they commit suicide. Yeah. I don't see any photos in your work about this topic. No, I, I photographed, uh, when I photographed uh, like the book, I, I decided, uh, I photographed uh, when people were drinking. I decided to show them respect in, in the book as huge people and, and trying to see or showing things that are not, you know, uh, showing the bad side of them, but uh, maybe it should have been done, I don't know, but uh, there's a very high suicide rate among young children, or young kids, or people in Greenland, probably the highest in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, that is, uh, I don't know why, why it is, actually, probably they don't see the light by the end of the tunnel, and uh, they're afraid of the future, or and it, it, people must think when they attack them as hunters or hunting communities that this is 4,000 year old tradition and uh, they've been living like this, you know, and when they feel that they cannot do it anymore and they think that there wouldn't be any life for them or, or, or work in the future. So it might be the part of it. Uh, a lot of, most of it happens in, in, in when people are drinking. So that's... Uh, sad thing about it. So my impression is that you show the people when they are at their best, so to say. That, that I decided to do that. You know, I mean, people can't go the other way and, and, and show people, you know, when you're drunk or, or, or you know, out of your mind. I didn't feel like that was fair to do that. You know, I. Uh, I most of my friends that I've been with, they, they, they hardly drink, you know, the hunters, and uh, if they do, they, they, they're quite nice. But there are people that are drunk and you see them, but you can also, yeah, so the, the, those people are real, real heroes of the Arctic, actually. So I, why should I destroy that, you know, by showing someone who is drunk would destroy for uh, the whole nation by showing somebody, you know, having a drinking problem but that's just a sad thing we're not we, we do show that you know in Europe America whatever but uh, there's a beautiful life there too and I decided to, take, to aim at that point it's always the next picture that will be my favorite one but I'm always trying uh, there are I, I, I go changing all the time this one I like for, for, for a year then then I like another one but I'm always trying to get something outstanding. There are so many great photographers in the world and I, I get inspiration by without, you know, I'm not copying anybody or anything like that, but it's just like you get an idea. Like uh, when Paul McCartney wrote, Hey Dude, he heard the song on the radio and it's a totally different song. So it's the same thing. You see a photograph and you get an idea for another one. So uh, it's just, uh, I'm trying to get 
somewhere out there, there's a great picture that I hopefully will get one day. As a photographer, do you ask people to do certain things or you are doing documentary photo I try to uh, just in let, the true sense? I just try to let things happen, you know, as much as I can. You know, it's sometimes it's like uh, uh, when I do documentary work, I try to always just allow things to happen as they, as they happen. But in the, in, when I'm working out for the paper and uh, as news stories or something, sometimes you have to post things, but it's different. I, I totally flip when I go for the paper, I, I go like, I even use a different camera. And uh, when I go on my special project, I use another camera and I don't use that at work just to get the feeling of, you know, and clear your mind. So you take your pictures when you're, when you're uh, out there in, the, in, in, in documenting things like the Arctic or, or Inuit hunters.